How are you doing today? Woo! I'm really excited to be here. This is my first time uh, in India, and so far I'm enjoying every minute. So I'd like to say that tech community in India is really amazing. Please clap your hands if you agree with me. Thank you. My name is Luis Aviles. I am a senior software engineer at this dot labs. I consider myself as an open source enthusiast. I love doing JavaScript, TypeScript. I am the founder of the Angular Bolivia community and the NG Bolivia conference. I love doing astrophotography stuff as my hobby. And because of my tech community contributions, I got recognized by Google, Microsoft, and Claudina. Let's start talking about components in web development. Who works with components uh, today? Who knows how to create a component? Great. Um, actually, we can consider components as Lego blocks, right? And as you are seeing in this picture, every piece, every block may be unique. And of course, we can combine them to create complex shapes. But uh, components are not just about uh, giving a shape or defining a layout in our application because components also have functionality, right? And that means a component uh, can handle data, we can communicate with each other among the, the components we have in our application, and also a component can request and handle data. And as a good developers, we always try to create components and reuse them in our application, right? Create once and reuse. How can we create a component today? Actually, it depends on the library or the framework we are using. So for example, in, in, in Angular, we can create a component using a class and the add component decorator. In React, we may create a class that extends from react.component. In the same way, view, uh, uh, we can mention also Svelte or any other library, right? Every framework defines its own way to create a component. But a good question is, how can we reuse these components inside an organization? This is not an issue if we are using the same technology stack across the organization and the multiple projects. But if we are planning to reuse components across different applications, different tech stacks, we are using uh, Angular on, on one side, Vue on the other side, or maybe React, we may think in a different approach to solve this problem. One possible solution for this is the use of the web components. But what are web components, actually? Web components is a um, set of different technologies. We can mention the JavaScript APIs that allow us to uh, create custom elements and use them as native elements in our applications. Next, we got uh, a way to encapsulate these components or these custom elements and isolate them from the rest of the DOM of the application. And that um, is really helpful to avoid possible collisions with other styles in our document. And finally, we got the HTML templates. I'm going to show you an example later. So now we understand what is a web component. It's time to meet Lit. Lit is a powerful open source project that enables you to create um, custom components. And it is a really small library. It is fast. And also, uh, the good thing is that Lit components are native web components. We are working with the, using Lit, we are working with the native web platform, actually. And its superpower is the interoperability. We may use this option if we are planning to reuse these components across different uh, frameworks, as I mentioned before. I'm going to show you an example how uh, to create a component using lit plus TypeScript. We need to use the custom element decorator. And, there, um, and this uh, decorator is going to help you to register this custom element and be ready to use in our project. We can provide a name, as this example says, core uh, card. 
and we can create the, the styles for this component that is going to be isolated from the rest of the document and this can be uh, inline styles. Also the interesting thing about lit is the, uh, the curators available to define reactive properties. And what does it mean? Every time we change the title field, the lead actually is going to trigger a re-rendering operation to have this component up to date. Next, we'll need to define a render method where we can create our HTML template. Also using uh, JavaScript only, we don't need any additional compilation, any other uh, step. We are still working with the web platform. And as you can see in this example, in line 14, we are using a JavaScript expression. So how can we integrate lead using Angular? I'm going to explain step by, by step. The first thing we'll need to do is install lead in our terminal, in our existing Angular project. We'll need to have also the web components polyfills to make it work. And once they are done, we can make sure to, to have them installed in our application, as you can see here. Um, I got the, the lit library and also the web components polyfills. So the current version of lit is 2.2. It's time to show you a demo where I created um, an Angular project. So this is a basic setup that is using a little bit of Angular material in this case, and we are going to render the speakers list of this conference. But before moving forward, I'd like to show you what's the structure of this project. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I hope this is okay. So in this case, um, I got the profile car project, which is um, a lead based uh, application and this is like a sort of, of um, a storybook where I created a, a card component which is a native web component and also I'm using the master detail uh, approach to, to test this component, see what um, the behavior it provides and also perform changes in an easy way. Okay, this is only for testing. Uh, and of course, uh, today we can use lead to build also single page applications. That's an interesting thing too. So I'm going to show you uh, how, it, how it is built, uh, the, the Angular part. So here, okay, let me expand this. I have created a web components folder where I am defining the, the component I'm going to reuse across different projects. So in this case, it, it is the core card, and also I have created a, a class that extends from a lit element, as I mentioned before. I got a couple of styles here, the reactive properties for the speaker, and instead of using only a single string, I'm going to um, provide a TypeScript model, which is the speaker and of course a, de uh, a default value. And also for the render method, I, I am creating uh, the, the HTML needed to render this card and also it's going to trigger an event for every time the user clicks over the button component. Um, you may uh, pay attention here to this part because um, every time the user clicks on that, on that button, the lead is going to trigger a custom event and you can specify also the, uh, the, the type of this uh, object. Next, you can use the detail attribute to send the speaker object. Okay, so I'm going to use this speaker card inside our Angular application, so that's the goal. I'm going to move forward, opening the speaker, speaker's component, because this is um, a basic Angular component. And also I have created uh, a speaker service, uh, which is only like a mock data. It's going to provide mock, mock data that is defined in this, in this file, as you can see here. Okay, what are the steps I need to do? First, I'm going to define maybe a read-only 
um, speaker's attribute, right? As an observable. And the specific type is going to be a speaker. I, I pretend to use this attribute to render multiple uh, speakers. And this can be optional in this case. I need to inject, uh, also I can use read only, uh, the speakers service I have created to. Speakers service. Okay, so far so good. And once this component gets initialized, I can uh, assign the mock data through the speaker service. So I'm going to use this dot speaker service dot get speakers. Um, okay, this is an observable on the speakers. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, there is an error. I cannot sign because it is read only. Okay, I need to remove this. Great. So now it's time to work on the template side, right? Uh, I can create la like a main container, maybe use the container class here, where I'm planning to render the core, the core, uh, core speakers element I have showed you before. So I'm going to open this again, just to make sure to use the registered element. So in this case, it's corp card. Going to use corp card instead. OK. Going to save these changes. And maybe I'm going to get an error uh, in this case. Uh, I'm going to show you the Angular application again. Zoom in a little bit. And what does it mean? Uh, actually, if you, if you pay attention on line one, it says the corp card I'm trying to use in, in my Angular template is not part of this module. And also, the corp card is not um, a re registered component for the Angular application. What is happening here is that Angular recognizes only uh, the Angular components by default. So if, I, if I'm planning to use a web component, I need to um, use the custom elements schema as part of this module. So I'm going to copy this. Going back to the Angular project, I'm going to open the app.module file. And in this part, I have created this schemas attribute where I'm going to set the custom elements schema. But this needs to be imported from the Angular core package. Don't forget that. Save these changes. Oh, it is still failing. What is happening here? Why is this still failing? Okay, let's go back here. Going to save these changes. The core card. OK, what I'm going to do now is um, use the structural directive, which is the ng4, the ng4, to create a new variable and use the speaker um, as the variable, of course, I'm going to read the speaker's att attribute, which is an observable. So that means I'm going to use the async, the async pipe. Okay. Okay. I'm almost done with this, but I need to make sure also to bind the right attributes for this web component. Again, I'm going to open the definition of this uh, lead component. And let's remember the name of the attribute I need to use here. So this is a speaker. And also, I need to remember the event that is triggering, right? which is edit the speaker. So I need to send speakers. I mean the speaker. I assign the speaker, speaker value here. And also, I'm going to use the event binding, uh, which comes from Angular, and define the edit, edit speaker, right? So I need to create an edit speaker method. I'm going to send the, the event attribute here. And let's continue creating this edit speaker into the component. OK. Here, I'm going to get an event object. Still using TypeScript here. Going to save these changes. And everything is 
compiling again. So here uh, you can see a couple of uh, the speakers of this conference and every item is uh, rendered using web components inside my Angular application. Uh, all right, but um, I need to catch this event every time I perform a click over this button because nothing happens uh, for now, okay? So what I'm going to do here is actually uh, use this event. Uh, maybe I can try with, with a console.log to show the, uh, its status, okay? Going to save these changes and what's going to happen? Going to zoom in a little bit so that you can take a look. And it is showing a custom event object. I'm not interested in the native event because I like to get the speaker details instead, right? So what I need to do in this case is uh, maybe create a new variable to get the speaker details. You can say speaker details here. And I can use the as syntax from TypeScript to and use the custom event in this case. Custom event, going to say that as part of its details, it comes with a speaker object. Uh, finally, I can access to the detail attribute where I'm going to have the speaker object I'm looking for. Okay, I'm going to show or print only this line after performing this operation and see what is happening now. I'm going to perform a, a click again. And uh, it is and this is still showing the custom event. Why is happening that? Because I am using event instead of speaker details. Going back again to the application, uh, performing a click, and yeah, there you go. And you are ready to catch, um, of course, use the object references you are getting here, right? Instead of the native events, you are getting the objects as expected. Okay, if you're interested to learn more about web components and how to use lit, you can take a look on lit.dev, which uh, provides also an interesting play playground so that you can give it a try. And also I'm going to um, upload this Angular project, this demo, to my GitHub account, where I usually share different resources. And also I wrote um, a blog about how to integrate web components using lit and Angular, and you can see uh, this tutorial is step by step on this website. All right, before finishing this talk, I'd like to send love to my dear grandmother who uh, passed away just uh, a couple of days before I started my trip. So I love you. I know you, you can hear me. Thank you very much. <laughs>